every single one of my t-shirts that I have made before is available now and link to the store will be down below in the description. You can get whatever t-shirt you want and that's that. So let's jump into the video. If you were watching this video right now, that probably means you want the answer to this question. How did heavy metal help me pass law school and probably the bar exam? Let's get started with the stories, shall we? Throw back some tea, it's story time. Right here, gotta show this off, my $200,000 piece of paper that is, you know, slightly not in the frame, but... Uh, this is a great embodiment to show what I was doing the last three years of my life. So I wanted to come on here, make a video like this for y'all so I could give you some insight and some interesting content, but also for me so that I could remember this time. So, how did heavy metal help me pass law school and probably the bar exam? The last three years have been absolutely crazy. Whenever you're in law school, you sacrifice a bunch of stuff, as you know. I'm sure that's the same with nursing school, medical school, dental school, whatever the hell veterinary school. And then after you finally finish the most grueling three years of your life through law school, you get to study for the bar exam, which is a fun two months, about eight hours a day, equaling close to 500 hours worth of studying. And then and only then are you semi-prepared for the bar exam to the point you don't feel like you want to throw up constantly every time you get a new essay problem or something like that. At the beginning of November, I'll come back on this channel and I'll be like, I passed the bar exam. And then I'll probably look just as happy as I do now. <laughs> I also want to tell my story of how my bar exam went. So basically, let me tell you that story and then let me tell you how heavy metal helped me get through everything and anything. So first of all, the bar exam is three days. The first day is three hours. Second day is six hours. Third day is six hours. The first day, what you get is like this mock client file where you have this fact pattern that lays down the facts of your client and the problem that they have. And then you have a bunch of case law, like cases to read, and you have to extract the rules of law from those cases and apply them to your situation. And that's an hour and a half. And then the second an hour and a half is like procedure and evidence questions pretty much short answer and that takes three hours and that's on the very first day which is the shortest day so my first day of the bar exam I wake up and I'm nervous I'm feeling like I'm gonna throw up seriously like I was very nervous I felt like I didn't know a thing even though I spent the last two months eight hours a day studying like crazy the most amount of studying I've ever done I was still extremely nervous and the first day like I said you know you have that mock client file and you can either type or handwrite and me I always type because I can type much quicker than I can write and I like to you know cut cut and paste and go back to different paragraphs and kind of arrange things and format things properly at the end. So I drive 45 minutes to this location and I start walking into the convention center and I realize I'm like, I don't have my computer. And I was like, oh my God, it was the worst thing. Like literally time and space had just stopped. And I was so nervous. I was like, of course, what the hell? So I was like in this mindset of being furious with myself for forgetting my laptop on the first day of the bar exam. Of course, something like that happens to me because I like to do things really quick. And it's not that I'm forgetful. It's just I like to get stuff done so quick and cross it off my list that I, I guess I'm kind of absent-minded at that expense. But I had to sit and think about this problem for about four seconds. The problem that could potentially cost me the bar exam exam and the license and sacrifice another two months of studying and then taking a bar exam and paying for the fee. I had to make this decision in about four seconds. So I sat down and I was like, do I either A, use pencil and paper and write, which I've never done before for this mock client file. Every single time I've practiced, I've typed it. I've gotten used to jumping around, not writing it one cohesive piece from start to finish. Or I could fight traffic, which is now morning traffic in Austin, Texas, which is shitty. And I could try to go back and get my laptop. Thought about it for a second. I was like, I'm going for it. I'm hopping back in my car and I'm leaving. I had already paid for parking at the parking garage. Luckily, she didn't make me pay again whenever I came back. I drove all the way back to my sister's house where I was staying, but I had about an hour until the bar exam started from the point I got back to my sister's house and got my laptop. Hot back in my car, literally sprinting back to my car, headed back towards the convention center, and to top it all off, my phone hadn't charged the previous night. I'm terrible with directions, so I had a map to the convention center pulled up on my phone. I have about 6% left and I am fighting through traffic. There was a wreck on the highway. I was freaking out. I was literally like in my car talking to myself and it was just crazy. I was telling myself that it's gonna be okay. We're gonna get there on time. Look at my phone and I have 6% and it's going down. Like I see it hit five, four and I'm like, oh God, what do I do? And I still have a ways to get back to the convention center. So I take a piece of paper and pencil and start writing down the directions and then my phone dies. Next thing you know, I put my phone down, grab the piece of paper, look up and I had missed the first turn. So I was like, oh God, the first direction that I'm supposed to take, I missed it. So now I'm lost and I'm literally praying. I'm like, please let me find the convention center. Some way or another, a miracle happened where I finally got my way to the convention center. Had like five minutes until the test started. Walked into the convention center and I was like 
so frazzled. And imagine this big convention center where like a thousand kids are taking this exam, lined up in desks, and you have your one specific seat that you have to sit in. So one of the proctors helped me to my seat. By this time, people had already started writing. The exam had started before I even sat down. And it took me about three to four minutes to sit down. Doesn't sound like much, but three or four minutes of constantly typing really fast, you can get a lot typed out in that amount of time. So I was already freaking out. So that was my very first day experience. You know, it went well. I feel like the first day went pretty well. The MPT, that's what the mock client file is called. I think I did a pretty good job on that. And then short answers, I think I did fairly well on that. So day one was the most stressful thing of my life. Literally, I was just so scared and like nervous for this exam that I think all common sense went out the window. We're just going to blame it on that for my own self-esteem. So that was day one. Day two is 200 questions, multiple choice, six hours. You have a morning session for three hours where you do 100 multiple choice. You break for lunch, and then you come back and do another 100 multiple choice in three hours. There's supposed to be, supposedly, there's a harder exam and an easier exam. It's either the morning or the afternoon. You get one or the other. So I had the tough exam for the morning and that psyched me out a little bit because I was like, oh my God, this better not be the easy one. If this turns out to be the easy exam, I'm screwed. And um, I feel like I fumbled my way through the first hundred questions. And then in the afternoon, the questions were significantly easier for me. So I was really happy about that. Day two ended on a stronger note. Day three is 12 essays in six hours. You have three hours to write six essays, break for lunch, another three hours in the afternoon to write the last six essays. And this is just like the last stretch. If you're a track person, it's the last hundred meters in the quarter mile race and it's just nuts. You release all your information you have, mentally, physically exhausted after. Six hours has never gone by so fast. Each essay, it gives you about 30 minutes to write and it feels like you're writing for about five minutes per essay because you have so much law in your head. So you are just word vomiting all over your essays. Anyway, day three went fairly well for me. I left feeling confident in the sense that I put every single piece of knowledge that was in my head into those essays. And they say that the bar exam is a test of minimal competence. And I feel like I show that I am minimally competent to be a lawyer. So, you know, that was just an unbelievably crazy experience. And that was my bar exam. The point in this video is how did heavy metal help me pass law school and the bar exam? It was very cathartic for me. Every time I started to get super stressed, which you do in law school, which you especially do during the bar exam, because you're feeling like you're defeated already. And you never feel like you're getting a grasp of the law for real. It's a really unsettling feeling. And I would be super stressed. And whenever I was stressed, I had these reactions. I had this creative outlet. I had the Hefner family to keep me going, kind of suggest songs for me and everything. And I remember the beginning of bar prep is whenever I hit 300,000 subscribers. So I wanted to do a thank you for you guys react to every single song on the Slipknot Iowa album. And Slipknot helped me tremendously because I would come in so tired, so dead and beaten up over reading these tiny print law books and outline after outline and all this stuff. It was such a release for me just to listen to some heavy metal and just like let all my emotion and anger and frustrations and stress out into the reactions and into the songs and into the music. And I really feel like with that outlet, I was able to refocus and I was able to sit back and take a deep breath and be like, okay, compartmentalize, work, reaction, let me get everything out here and then we're gonna go back to work. And it kind of pushed the reset button, gave me that extra push that I needed. It gave me what I needed to stay confident and to stay on top of things. And I really feel like that was the same experience through law school. You get tired of sitting in your house all day. You damn near have cabin fever, reading so many cases and so many books and that you need something in your life, whether that's working out, which I really wasn't at the time, as listening to music, playing an instrument. For me, what kept me going, my creative outlet, like I said, and my way to have this cathartic release was just heavy metal. And I think without that, I wouldn't have been, I would have been so much more stressed studying for the bar exam. I would have been so much more stressed in law school. I would have had a terrible time because it would have been so overwhelming that I wouldn't have anything to release. And I feel like I would have been a terror to be around, releasing all of my energy and pent up emotion on people instead of like letting a safe outlet in the music just kind of take over. And that's what I feel really attributed aside from studying eight hours a day, equaling 500 hours over two months. But I feel like heavy metal played a really integral part in me doing well in law school. And hopefully, hopefully on the bar exam, like I said, I'm going to be making a reaction video to my results at some time whenever they come out in November or earlier, hopefully, I don't know. And that's that. So I hope this video was interesting for you guys. Like I said, I just kind of wanted it to be some memories for me. One other little thing, my while I was at my sister's house, she packed these awesome little Ziploc things like lunches, snacks for me to take to the bar exam with little motivational quotes she wrote in Sharpie on the front. Had like Kleenex, had Advil, had hand sanitizer, had emergency, like drinks, snacks, goldfish, pretzels, Nutella, all sorts of stuff. Like it was just really, really good. Thank you, Chelsea, for doing that for me. And this was awesome. So I hope this was some fun content for you guys. And that is all I got for you today. So keep smiling, keep being yourself. Don't let anybody throw shade at you. And if you are struggling with something, you're in school, you're stressed, you just can't handle life right now, just go find something you like to do. Go paint, go watch TV. I give you permission to stop doing what you're doing. Go play a game of Super Smash Brothers or watch 
watch an episode of Friends or something, I give you that permission to just go and have a little bit of release. Enjoy yourself, but go back to what you're doing. Give it another shot, but after you have some time to just kind of reflect or do something that you actually like. So I love you guys so much. Keep smiling, keep being yourself. Don't let anybody throw shade at you. I will see you tomorrow. That's a motherfucking fact. Oh yeah, peace. Now